The rivalry uh, ties in Jacksonville started in 1933, which was 87 years ago and has been played here ever since, with only two exceptions. Uh, it's no secret that I'm a football fan and I'm incredibly excited to have the game here again this year in Jacksonville. I have very fond memories of attending this game going back to my childhood in the 80s and I'm just happy that this tradition is going to continue. I want to thank uh, both universities, uh, the athletic directors, Scott Strickland and Greg McGarity, uh, for working with, with us to not only make sure the game happens this year, I would remind you that months ago there was uncertainty whether there would be any sports, much less the uh, uh, ability to have this tradition in our city and it's happening this year. In addition to that, uh, last year we, you will recall we had announced a term sheet that we had negotiated with the universities uh, to extend the length of the game. Uh, when that term sheet uh, was negotiated before it went to council, uh, and final contract, uh, we then had COVID hit. Uh, we have since uh, regrouped with the, both universities uh, and we have a term sheet which runs through, uh, with extensions, which, which runs through 2025. So uh, we had this game here before I became mayor and we're going to have this game here uh, until I leave office and I expect that future administrations will continue to negotiate to keep this wonderful tradition in both schools here. This game is a vital part of Jacksonville's story and it's important that tradition continue, but we must do it in a safe manner. To do that, we took additional steps and implemented precautions and safety measures to reduce risk for attendees. As a result, the game may look and feel a little bit different, but let's be grateful we're having this game. My colleague Bill McConnell with ASM Global is going to come up and share more information about these precautions, stadium operations, and then we'll hear from Jacksonville Sheriff's Office and our Jacksonville Fire and Rescue. Bill? Thank you, Mayor Curry. Good morning, everyone. You know, to add to what the mayor said, this is only the second time in, in the history here in Jacksonville that the Georgia-Florida game and the Jaguars have uh, played back-to-back -back on the same weekend. And if 2020 has thought us anything, especially here in Jacksonville, it's that we're all about making history. Now, as bad as the, the pandemic has been for all of us, much credit has to be given to the fans of Jacksonville and, and the guests that have been attending Jaguar games at TI Bank Field, um, the AEW fans that have been coming to events at, at Daly's Place, uh, 121 Financial Ballpark, home of the Shrimp, has had movie nights and other activity. Uh, the Symphony has been performing at the Times Union Center for the Performing Arts, and the Ritz Theater has been, been open now for some time. The people attending Jacksonville and uh, the people attending events in Jacksonville and those putting them on, as the mayor said, have done so in a safe and smart way. And that approach continues to this weekend, into this weekend. To the universities of Florida and Georgia, we thank you, as we do every year, for giving us the opportunity to host this game and for giving Jacksonville its number one event of the year. And to Jaguars and Jaguar fans, we, we thank you for, the leading, for leading the way all season long and showing us how to do major events in the stadium um, in, a, in, a safe, uh, in a safe way. And also for participating in this historical weekend with back-to-back -back games. Okay, to the fans attending Georgia and Florida, again, we thank you in advance uh, for adhering to the unique policies that will be in place for 2020. If we continue the momentum and adhere to these policies, we'll put us that much closer to getting back to normal for 2021, which is the goal. So we say, have a plan. Work your plan, know your plan. The mask and face covering policy is in effect. Masks are required for all staff and guests and must be worn at all times in TIA Bank Field on Saturday unless one is actively eating or drinking. And this includes when you're at your seat. Parking lots open at 12.30, and fans are reminded that for this year only, there will be no tailgating in the city-owned and city-managed parking lots. Stadium gates will open at 1.30, and uh, we do encourage people to arrive early. 
Uh, kickoff is at 3.30, and we will have, the stadium will have all the entry points open. But again, we encourage people to arrive early so that there is uh, nobody waiting at the, at the entry point as kickoff approaches. All tickets are mobile, and that'll be the first time for the Florida Georgia game uh, that mobile tickets will be in place. So if you are new to mobile ticketing, we recommend that before the weekend arrives, you get acclimated with that so that you have a smooth uh, entry point into the stadium. Another new policy, which, which may be welcome for some, is that beer and wine will be sold inside the stadium and uh, guests are encouraged to enjoy the game responsibly. Concessions at the stadium will be cashless. Uh, this gives a greater opportunity for, for contactless transaction and ample signage will be in place to encourage distancing and hand sanitizers will be placed throughout the stadium. You will hear more from Chief Ayub from JSO here in just a moment. But again, the message is that we thank in advance the Georgia and Florida fans for your cooperation and for your adherence to, to these protocols. As always, we are honored to host this storied rivalry. At the end of the game on Saturday, stadium staff and the Jaguars have a detailed plan to transition the stadium from college SEC configuration and NFL Jaguars configuration. And we have staff working around the clock. Um, and But for Sunday, um, remember for Jaguars, the parking lots will open at 10, stadium gates 11, and the kickoff for a Jaguar game will be at one. And a final reminder to Georgia, Florida fans that are in for the weekend, uh, if you're in town on Sunday, hit up jaguars.com if you wanna see both games of this epic uh, historic doubleheader here in Jacksonville. And with that, I bring up Chief Ayub from JSL. Good morning. I'm Andre, your Chief of Special Events for the Jackson Sheriff's Office. I wanna thank you for joining us today and for helping us get the support and traffic and safety information out to the public. Our goal at the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office remains the same as we are committed to public safety. We're asking all attendees to arrive when parking lots open. This year, parking lots open at 12.30 p.m. All stadium gates open at 1.30 p.m. to give you enough time to get into the stadium for kickoff, which is 3.39 p.m. Shifting gears, I wanna talk a little bit about safety. Remember, it will be dark after the game, so we suggest taking a picture where you park so you can locate your vehicle after the game. We will not tolerate underage drinking. There will be undercover and uniformed police officers enforcing this. So you will be held accountable for your actions. For important traffic updates, please follow JSO PIO on Twitter before and after the game. And I wanna to touch on something that uh, Mr. McConnell mentioned. Uh, he said something about no tailgating. So listen, if you do not have a ticket, please do not come down to the Sports and Entertainment District. Uh, parking lots uh, uh, will be uh, strictly enforced in tailgating. So if you don't have a ticket, please don't come down. Uh, so with that, thank you and God bless. And I'll hand it over to Chief Powers, Fire Department. Good morning, thank you for coming. So <clears throat> although we're not gonna have uh, city lots and RV city open, there are gonna be some private lots that are open for RVs. And so I just wanna remind everyone that's uh, down there in their RVs to be especially careful um, with their generators. Make sure those generators are spaced adequately away from their RV so that we don't have an issue with carbon monoxide poisoning. For those that are attending the game and for those that are um, gonna be having uh, game watching parties at, in other areas, I remind you, if you plan to, you know, to drink your favorite beverage, whatever that is, please have a plan beho beforehand on how you're gonna get home safely. The City of Jacksonville and the Jacksonville Fire and Rescue Department are working together on this year's information and first aid zones presented by UF Health. Each zone is going to provide an area where residents, students, and visitors in, in the downtown Jacksonville area can find assistance before, during, and after the Georgia-Florida game. Guests will be assisted with basic medical help, first aid, transportation services, game day information, directions, and more. There are six locations this year. There'll be one at the Veterans Memorial Wall. That's at 1145 East Adams Street. There'll be one on the North Bank Lawn. That's at 2 West Independent Drive. There'll be one at the Stadium North Bus Loop. That's on East Beaver Street. 
There'll be one at the shipyards, 724 East Bay Street. There'll be one at Lot E, which is near 1738 East Adams Street. And there'll be one at Metro Park 2 at 1406 Gator Bowl Boulevard. At each location, there will be a City of Jacksonville employee along with a Jacksonville Fire and Rescue paramedic that can help you with any of, the, any of your needs. All information and first aid zones presented by UF Health will be open on Saturday, November 7th from 7 until 12, uh, from November 7th from 12 p.m. until 30 minutes post game. Also, please don't forget to stay hydrated during the game. It's very important. And with that, I'll welcome the mayor back. Thank you. We'll take questions now. Sure, I'll let the chief address that specifically, but let me just say this. Let's just be smart. Look, the protocols that we're following, so both universities have protocols for game day, and uh, so do NFL teams, our NFL team. Uh, they've asked that we be con what we do here is consistent with what they do at their schools, and that's a reasonable expectation. So we are living in a pandemic. Uh, we're, we're navigating COVID uh, in a safe, responsible way in our city. So we're just, I'm just asking people, just be smart. If you have a ticket, come to the parking lot. You're gonna be with your family and your friends. You're gonna do your thing in a smart, safe way. Don't need to be down there unnecessarily if you don't have a ticket. Chief? You hit the nail on the head there. I mean, I don't know what else to add. I mean, that's honestly everything I was gonna say, the mayor hit, so I don't, I don't know if you have any follow-up questions. I so I, I can mention, RV City is obviously closed this year. Um, sorry. So our, I don't know if we mentioned, RV City's closed this year. I can't give you a number. Af afterwards, I can get you a number how many private lofts there is. Uh, we'll work with all the private lot owners, uh, and then we'll have some officers assisting them in those lots. That answers your question. But we can give you an exact number. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're very fortunate because of the tremendous collaboration that's in place. Again, we talked a, a minute ago about the other events and activities that are happening in Jacksonville, and it is clear that the patrons that are coming to the venues respect the policies and, and for the most part are following that. So that momentum continues into this weekend. But to answer your question, the collaboration between the Jaguars, the universities of Georgia and Florida have yielded a, a um, stadium that's going to be configured largely the same way as it has been for Jaguar games. So we'll, we'll have a Florida Georgia game that reflects the policies that have already been in place and, and then we'll continue on to Sunday. But yes, there is a, there is a, a very detailed schedule about transforming the stadium again from college SEC into the into the NFL game for Sunday. We have crews working around the clock to handle um, really from from soup to nuts, in, including cleaning and sanitizing. If, and if I can add to what Bill said, listen, this isn't just something last week we started planning for. We've really been planning for this late July, and we do this every year. So you're looking at at least three months of planning uh, Jaguar game and Georgia, Florida, with all the when we talked about you know the, the mayor's office, the fire department. Uh, the uh, ASM Global, SAFE, all these organizations that we've been working on. So the collaboration has been incredible, and I think we're going to have a great event this weekend. I'll, I'll answer that. Uh, the council auditors and the council have an ROI. They have economic financial models. My staff has spent hours with them. Uh, so they'll evaluate that, will assess that, and ultimately, as it should be, it'll come down to a vote. So council members will have to decide if they're going to push the green button or the red button. It's a yes or a no. They'll do their analysis, and we'll see where it lands. So I'll touch on the Georgia, Florida, and the uh, Jaguar. That's normal. That's something that we, you know, the training, no additional training. That's something that we handle 
uh, week, week to week, year to year. But now leading to the election, obviously when we had the RNC uh, come into our city, we started doing a lot of planning uh, for that and going into the election. Uh, last week, if you weren't aware, we did a workshop for the election, then we did a functional exercise at the academy, just work through some tactics if we had protesters rallies here in Jacksonville, just to make sure we we're all on the same page, not with just JSO, but with JFRD, mayor's office, OGC, state attorney's office, and just the legal aspects and tactical aspects of a, a protest rally. So we have, we are preparing for the, uh, for the third for several months, and I think we're in a good place. Does that answer your questions? All right, I would just close with, I know there are some people that are frustrated with uh, the protocols that are in place. They're used to their traditions of around this game. Uh, we all miss that, uh, and I understand that, but first and foremost, we have to operate in a safe, responsible way. Additionally, we have to respect both universities and their protocols that they utilize and have implemented uh, at their stadiums and around their, uh, where they play ball. So uh, let's go out, let's be smart, responsible, safe, and let's have a good time and have a good football game. Thank you.